Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Hero and this is Langerson Mobile Apex Season 8. Uh, these are going to be the qualifying matches, um, so if those who don't know, you do 5 qualifying matches to figure out what your starting rank is going to be based off your previous season's rank. Um, I'm doing all these matches at the, the earliest time bracket, so it's going to be 3 a.m., which is really, really, you know, late or early, depending on how you look at it. Um, I usually do this time slot just so I can see more unique boxes rather than the standard meta. Um, I will say probably doing five matches at 3 a.m. as opposed to just doing my win a, win a week is a, was a bit rough. Um, that said, um, the box I'm, we're going up against isn't unique enough, at least there's Hein. <laughs> But uh, before we dive into that, let's go ahead and talk about our new changes here. Uh, I think the main things were I dropped Toa and Naomi. I think were those. I, I know I dropped Toa. I, I, I think the other character I dropped was Naomi. Um, and I replaced them with um, uh, Lucretia and SP Sherry. Um, and I think, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, still using uh, Subame and some of the other characters. I now have a decent number of characters that have good guard pierce. And then I have a, a decent um, number of characters that just do really good uh, single target strikes. And I could definitely make some of these characters AoE if I need to. Though I don't plan, I don't intend to do that. Um, uh, only things to note uh, is Lucretia is 5 stars. Um, I did do some, a few more off screen banner pulls before the Lucretia banner went down and ended up getting another Lucretia which was enough to get her up to five stars just barely. Uh, Kyura is literally three shards away from um, getting six stars and everyone else is six stars at this point. All right um, and also SP Cherry at this point is fully unlocked so she has her, she has her unique class as well as all of her unique abilities now. Anyway as for our opponent um, Looks like three healers, though technically you can do a little bit of off healing with uh, Lucretia if you happen to have um, the uh, the hammer that heals people. Um, besides that, one, two, three tanks. Yeah, three tanks, uh, three healers start up. It looks like a little bit of mi it looks like a yeah, it looks like a, a mix of long range strikers and some you know nasty AOE damage. So a lot of things that kind of annoy me. Anyway, um, I was actually unsure what to go for first. I went for Ares, because it's kind of a good safe bet. I uh, went ahead and took Hilda as my first pick. They did ban my um, Rosen Seal, of course. Um, they banned my Lacoris and my uh, Sophia at this point. So, went straight for three of my, you know, three of my four healers. For some reason, did not ban my Florentia. Um, if they were going to go after my healers, I would, would have gone for Florentia. So, they take Hilda. Um, at this point, I was like, I'm not letting you have Florentia if you're going to have Hilda. And also, um, I was not—I didn't want to deal with Lucretia. Uh, Lucretia is, uh, is extremely long range, especially with AoE as well, and her swapping mechanics. Um, and she's also reincarnation, so she's definitely very, very nasty to deal with. So, took my Florentia. Also, uh, taking taking out their Florentino was going to force them to take a healer, um, more than likely, because they don't have any other healers besides Lacoris and um... what is her name? Holy cow, I can't remember her name. Every time I get, like you know cut the video to look up a name, I then immediately remember it the moment I cut off the video. TRS, of course. Anyway, uh, my opponent did ban um, SP Sherry as well as my Illustrial. Looks like it's going after. Uh, going after my long legs, not a big deal. Uh, they take Lacoris, which is fine. At this point, Lacoris can actually be a very viable healer um, with her unique helmet. Uh, one thing to note about her unique helmet is it only works if she has a faction buff. So you either need to bring a, her own faction buff or buff her in this case with Hilda. Um, at this point, I went ahead and took care of their long legs and also took care of their stupid ninja because um, I'm single target and. Uh, Himiko is just really, really bad to deal with um, when you're single target. Um, took out Lucretia. This will be my first match, uh, PvP match using Lucretia. I think it is. I don't remember if I did any in World Arena. Um, let's see. Banned uh, Mariel. It, yeah, banned some of my pseudo, ass my assassin and pseudo assassin. They take Bozel. So definitely leaning towards the dark factions. 
Uh, despite the fact they have Lana, I was I'm kind of comfortable dealing with Lana at this point. So I was like, I'm gonna get rid of S behind because he has teleport. Get rid of um, Helena because of, she's extremely long range and does nasty debuffs. Take Tsubame. So I took Tsubame over um, Kayura just simply because um, we are going up against more casters. Um, so I felt like I was probably Tsubame might be a better pick. Um, also, I didn't really need to worry about buffing her uh, because Tsubame is a reincarnation faction. So they banned my um, my young Jessica and my um, and Kayura. So it leaves me with, essentially with um, Helena and uh, another tank if I really want to go double tank but against this this lineup that's probably all aoe um no point in taking another take got rid of trs just in case got rid of um sonia just in case uh, she happens to be um had sonia could possibly have a few assassination moves so pretty much left him uh, left my opponent with a second tank which they went with freya which i'm completely okay with all right so let's go ahead and look at our opponent first so things to note, my opponent is uh, using Lakoras as a healer. So mass heal, mass protect, and force of darkness. Um, so force of darkness means Bozal can safely just carry all of his AoEs. Uh, went two AoEs and seal, so no three cost. Um, Lana actually is, is mostly single target, though he does, uh, does have he Heaven Sanction, which is pretty long range. Uh, Freya didn't bring a faction buff. Um, I think she's just here to kind of just be it, just here to possibly tank a few hits, and that's about it. Um, Rose Lash is actually pretty good uh, in this fight, just simply because it can be used to remove Subame's um, uh, stealth, since it's an AOE move that doesn't target. And then Hilda, standard thing, War Goddess, yeah, nothing too special there. Uh, very much like my Hilda. Um, looks like my. Her defense uh, looks like overall. I think I have better defenses and health. Um, standard Helena, nothing too special. I usually go Angels with her because um, the the magic resistance. Uh, Lucretia, I go single target with her. So Impure Shockwave, Dark Reaper, and Free Strike. Usually I am always up against a Helena. So in Helena or not Helena, uh, Hilda, um, and Hilda is usually Spears. So Free Strike is pretty much a safe bet to take. Um, obviously we got the Arcane Golem that uh, provides additional 2 range, uh, can reduce cooldowns for one turn, and you can also swap positions with the Summoner with a range of about 7 I think it is. Um, now one thing to note is the Arcane Golem does start with uh, Silence, uh, so this round the only thing it could possibly do is attack, it does have a ranged attack. Um, we got Florentia here, standard healer kit for Florentia. Uh, Subame, um, I think I mentioned last time I ever used Subame was like, um, I was the issue was i would use killing machine and then i would have no other attacks so i dropped her extra movement for shadow raid um in hindsight in in hindsight there's um in a few matches i think it, it's still better to take the extra movement but for this match i think it's actually pretty good to have two anyway uh, i think that's everything so let's go ahead and dive right in so first thing i did i was immediately moved in um i did get a breeze proc um the problem was is i actually moved in a little too far and so I immediately lost my stealth the moment I moved in. Uh, I did get one proc off my unique helmet, so I got plus one mobility from that. I also have plus two mobility because I freeze proc'd. Um, that's kind of one issue I have with Subame is I feel like sometimes I have to stall and wait for breeze procs or, or uh, tenue proc, uh, tenue breezes, uh, because she's just she's short legged is the problem. Anyway, let's go ahead and keep going. So right now I'm kind of just passing turns to see what my opponent does. Um, my opponent doesn't have any um, any extra mobility or act against, so it's just a matter of seeing where my opponent moves. And I'm kind of positioning myself since I'm the I'm first player um, in a way so I can get the initiative next round. And I positioned uh, Helena up there just to make sure I get the, the uh, terrain, the crystals into the trees. That way I can safely go through them without losing mobility. So I went ahead and did Rush on Lucretia. Um, didn't really need to do an act again because I'm going first next round anyway, and my opponent can't reach me. Uh, so their their um, their Lana actually got a Breeze proc. Um, so this is her range right now. Um, with uh, Heaven Sanction and her uh, talent allowing her to get plus one range, 
Um, she can cast a spell here and go one, two, three, four, five. In which case, it's going to hit everybody except for these three back here. So there's definitely multiple targets to get blasted by uh, Lana there. Uh, that being said, uh, if she does that, she'll get herself killed. So more likely, she's going to try, try to move something else first. But um, with the breeze proc and the plus one from the helmet, um, I can't reach anything just yet, uh, unfortunately. But I do have Lucretia here, and I do have extra move movement. Um, right now, again, I can only go after the tanks. But there is something I can do um, if I want to be cheeky. But uh, to be honest, um, I'm kind of just interested in taking out something. So what I ended up doing is I just moved in to Impure uh, Shockwave, which does... It does a lot. Um, it does extra damage against Holy, which Freya is Holy. Um, it also pretty much debuffs all of, all of her stats, so including her defensive stats. So it's a pretty it's a pretty strong uh, strong hit. And then I'm gonna do shift position to swap positions, bring her back into safety, and then I just move her up here just to be safe. So at this point, I'm kind of just passing turns just to see what my opponent does next. Freya was obviously the, the low-hanging fruit here as far as the uh, targets. Um, there wasn't... she Freya wasn't going to be doing anything in this match besides just tanking a hit. So just taking her out just means one less tank to worry about. Um, ended up getting a second Breeze proc, which definitely was in my favor. Um, did provoke a uh, the Heaven Sanction, which is fine. And since Lana has Breeze, I don't have to worry about Clock procs, because she went Breeze. So at this point, I do take another action. Since I did kill one of their units, they're going to go first next round, so I went ahead and moved in. Um, I do have the um, Magic Bow here that gives uh, I can attack in melee. So I moved in, did my strongest attack. And my opponents don't actually have any single target attacks in now since Lana's down. So just went in to do an attack and that's it. Went ahead and moved in. Managed to get rid of the silence, which was my main goal. Also, I was getting her back to full health just to potentially survive a hit from Hilda. Um, she did have a uh, mobility down debuff, um, so I did cast a, another uh, effect on her to get her extra mobility and possibly dispel the, the debuff. And that made it so I can actually just move into place and just take out the other target. Um, at full health, uh, Subami has first strike, so there's definitely no danger of actually getting herself killed. And there you go. So yeah, Subami MVP. Um, took out two opponents, Lucretia took out one. Pretty good stuff. Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, we're up against Mingzilla here. Um, I, floating Courtyard is, as I've mentioned before, the map I hate the most usually. Um, and looking at my opponent, a uh, little bit, like I said, just kind of a mix. Um, has a lot of act again, some tele has some act again, some teleports, uh, some assassins that can guard bypass. Um, yeah, seems to just be kind of a really kind of just a melting pot of a little bit of everything. Um, there are three, possibly four tanks. So yeah, um, looking at this box, I was like, I don't even know what. The ban because none of these are like my most hated enemies so i went and went for a uh, young jessica for or not young uh, tensei jessica first uh they banned my hilda i was like okay usually matches where i they ban my hilda first tend to go bad um uh, so I, they take their hilda um i wanted to start getting rid of their assassins so i went and got rid of uh, zerda um i did, also didn't really want to deal with um bernhardt he can be rather bulky, and his AoEs can be really, really nasty. He also just does a lot of damage, even with like a, a, a raw basic attack. Um, so I definitely just did not want him around. Um, obviously, my other t my other tank was taken, so I took Freya instead. They're going for my assassins immediately. They take SP Freya, so I'll be going up against S or not Freya, SP Sherry. Um, since they took SP Sherry, I was like, alright, well, I'm going to get rid of your Princess faction. Um, I checked multiple times, and that was their only faction buffer for, for SP Sherry. Um, they don't have, they don't have uh, uh, 
they don't have uh, was it uh, glory they don't have or uh, they don't have glory they don't have um meteor and i just took out their princess faction buff so yeah their sp sherry has no buffs and there's no, no one in this group that has an attack buff so yeah this will be just sp sherry with no buffs i take lucretia um just she did rather well in the previous match so i just took her um, they got rid of Kyura, they did get rid of uh, Florentia. I don't really know the purpose of getting rid of Florentia. Um, maybe possible to get rid of an attack buff or just to start whittling away at my healers. Uh, obviously, I wasn't intending on taking Florentia because they banned my Hilda. Um, Florentia without a faction buff tends to be a little less effective because of her mechanics. Uh, we got Werner here. Um, so I was like, alright, so they have possible guard bypass and stun and someone that if they move 10 spaces can bypass guard as well on this map it's pretty narrow so i don't know if he can actually pull off the 10 movement um so i wasn't exactly sure what was going to go on with that um definitely got rid of yulia did not want to deal with that uh no self-resing i didn't want to deal with any teleports or any of those types of buffs so i got rid of um huh what is her name Sorry about that. Iris. It's just been a while since I've actually seen her. Alright, so ban Iris. Um, also, I was banning Iris to see if I can force them to take, take a healer. Um, went and grabbed Young Jessica. Uh, since I do have Origin faction buff, I can at least buff her. Uh, one thing to note about Lucretia is she does have access to mass attack. Uh, so I don't really need to worry too much about uh, attack buffs. Also, bringing Young Jessica, or not Young, Tensei Jessica. Um, she has a single target, she has strength in. Um, so I definitely have all my attack buffs taken care of. So even without faction buffs, the other characters are pretty safe picks. Go after my Lacoris. They take out my Hilda. Um, they went to Rose and Seal. I was like, okay. Um, at this point, I got rid of everything else that I hate. I, hate. I was completely fine with them taking either a second tank or a second healer. Uh, technically, you can use Chloe as an AoE caster. Or hack a single target caster if you really want to. Um... So it's a possibility you can kind of make her into a pseudo attacker if you really want to. Um, take Tsubame. Um, I kind of I wanted a kind of a reliable assassin, quote unquote. Um, they went and took care of my healers. You might have noticed I didn't take an actual healer. Um, Lucretia can passive heal, so can um, Tensei Jessica, and Marielle can also heal. I can actually make her into a healer if I really want to. Uh, they take Chloe. And I went ahead and take Marielle. Uh, Lush Shield's just not very good on this map, usually. So some interesting things uh, on this map. As you probably already know, it's very narrow. And, and the biggest issue, of course, is Cherry has really high mobility. Um, it's She did take Shadow Raid. Now her troops are unicorns. They're melee only. So if she does do Shadow Raid, it's only going to be Sherry attacking. Um, I have seen various Chinese matches where they did take ranged troops with Shadow Raid and still were able to kill some uh, squishy casters, which I definitely have a lot of squishy characters. So it's pretty, there's a chance that she can, you know, sneak in a kill that way. Um, obviously Warner, which is now called Warner Dime, because I think there's another Warner character out there. Um, he... Uh, once it gets up to 10 mobility is when he kind of becomes dangerous. I mean, also he's gradually going to buff himself up. Um, I'm not too worried about Sherry. Uh, as mentioned, she doesn't have a faction buff. Um, the only person that can provide a faction buff is Hilda. Uh, Rosenseal did not bring a faction buff. So literally it's just going to be these three characters that have a faction buff. One of them being Warner, which until he can bypass guard, which is going to be kind of hard on this map. It's hard to get 10, mo 10 movement in this map because it's so narrow. Um, and my Freya is has phalanxes, so probably not too, too much to worry about there. Uh, but just in case, because I always expect my opponent to get tenure breezes, um, I was I was gonna pl I I had a plan, and it involves Subame. So Subame can't be single targeted uh, until she either takes AOE damage or someone go moves up next to her. Or until the or until the stealth buff wears off. Which, by the way, the stealth buff can wear off, and it does take time for it to actually refresh, um, despite it. Um, so that was something I found out in a match that uh, was a bit surprising. But so looking here, we did have a breeze proc on Sherry. Um, she can reach this part here. She can obviously attack with um, Shadow Raid. 
Now, she can't go after Subame. Um, she is stealth, so she can't actually make the attack. Um, so what will end up happening instead is she will have to either move next to Subame and then attack whatever's behind her, which will in turn... Well, I guess one thing to note about Sherry is her her act again is different now. Um, used to be just whenever she got a kill. Uh, now it's based off after making an attack if she's if there are two or um, if there are only one or one or less enemy within two blocks, she can act again. So what's kind of neat about this is even if you don't intend on getting a kill, you can use Shadow Raid um, to like move in, attack Freya from like two away, and that will still proc the uh, act again. Uh, so some things you've seen in matches is they'll move in, just purposely attack something, and then you and then immediately get an act again. And since they, she has such high mobility, she can then loop around the formation and possibly get a kill. Obviously, that can't happen here because it's so narrow. Um, and th so the situation here is can't attack Subami because she's stealth. Attacking Frey is attacking a tank. Um, you can shadow raid behind these characters. But doing so would put her in range, uh, put her in a range where she cannot uh, get her act again. And I still, I still don't like the idea of sacrificing my characters, so I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of Subame here and Freya. Obviously, Freya is going to be there to tank, but Subame, they can't go through Subame despite the fact she's stealth, and they can't target her. So literally, I can use her to just block both uh, Sherry and Warner from doing anything, and that'll give me time to get set up with the other characters. Sorry if that was a little long-winded. So yeah, I I didn't want to lose my golem, so I went ahead and just shifted back for now. Also, I actually wanted to open up a slot for um, for Marielle, because right now she actually takes re reduced damage. So at this point, they're kind of closing in. Uh, Werner does provide a passive uh, mobility increase, so their mobility is even higher now, but there's no place to go besides down the murder alley here, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, obviously, I, did take, um, I didn't take an extra mobility for Subame here, so the only target I have right now is Hilda. Uh, I'm just out of range with Marielle as well. Um, I've already used my act again using Strengthen just to get my range up. So I can't do an act. I can't do any act again shenanigans with uh, Tensei Jessica just yet. Um, I can teleport someone. And that's about it. Uh, Lucretia is just out of range of doing anything, though I can definitely do some swapping to get in range if I need to. But for right now, I'm just kind of moving up. So I moved up with Freya to make sure, even if Sherry wanted to, she can't get in range of, to do Shadow Raid against Tensei Jessica. So the only thing she could target with um, is either. Freya, who's a tank, or go after Marielle. And I was actually completely okay with them uh, with her attacking Marielle. So, Shadow Raid, only she will attack, not troops. Marielle has reduced damage because she has her um, uh, commandment, so she takes 25% less damage, among other things. Or, sorry, no, she takes 50% less damage. Oh, no, right. Yeah, damage taken is 25% less. She deals 50% less. So, that pretty much ensures she just doesn't get killed by this. And my Amazons are fully decked out as far as equipment's concerned. So I moved, uh, I did that swap to get one extra step, which is all I needed to get in within range with Lucretia to go after Werner, who's outside guard range. My goal for this fight obviously is to kill all the threats, which is just Werner and Sherry. Sherry's already acted, so I take out Werner. So now the only DPS they have is Sherry, and Sherry's done her act again already. She's used Shadow Raid already. Um, the only thing she has is her 3C, and I could safely move Sabami forward. Uh, my opponent has no AOEs, so my opponent can just move in, or my uh, Subami can just move in, not worry about being attacked, and then just move in to finish off Sherry. Killing machine takes her out. And then that's it. So yeah, a lot of Subame play this uh, this week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any other matches this week. Um, uh, unfortunately, the rest of my matches were losses. Um, I'll just summarize them. Uh, I like I usually don't show them because they're usually some just stupid mistake that pretty much just results in don't do that mistake again. 
and then I usually do it again, again some in some other match. Um, this match here, uh, I forgot I I didn't check terrain when I attacked with Illustrial, and so my attack that I thought was gonna, was free uh, ended up being guarded. Um, and then I kind of tried to, I tried to stall the match using Sabame. Um, my opponent did have AOEs, and so I was trying my best to try to stay out of AOE range and hope for um, a breeze proc. So this was the match where I was like, I could have really used the extra the extra movement with Quick Step. Um, that would have helped me a lot. Um, another thing I d didn't really consider doing in that match was I could have sacrificed one of my characters to change the turn order. Um, that would have possibly helped me. Um, but yeah, it wasn't great. Um, this one, I literally just I sent Subami to kill a golem, and for some reason I thought she was safe, even though my opponent had Freya and a bunch of AOE. So it was just I ended up just throwing everything away. My opponent was also season seven veteran, so it just didn't go well. And then this match, the person pretty much mocked me <laughs> as he just oh, just swarmed me. Um, one thing I didn't take into account um, with Hil uh, with Helena is she's actually a really bad matchup against um, against uh, Rosalia um, because Rosalia's 3C can actually put a sword on her on her space which will get rid of the crystals and w usually the thing that makes uh, Helena very bulky is um, she can um, you know put out those crystals and when she's on crystal she takes reduced damage and she heals after combat um, but Rosalia could be like, oh, well, there's a sword there, so you're no longer getting that benefit, and I'm now buffed instead. And so, kind of just wrecked me. Um, I also failed to get the kill on Rosalia, and then my opponent just kind of swarmed in. Um, also, I completely forgot, um, my opponent did have Claret, which was kind of unique. Um, I completely forgot that Eye of the Storm, uh, actually disables passives, and, uh, I didn't have a guard buff up on my, um, my Hilda. And so what ended up happening was, you know, Obviously, she ki got got a kill off on Hil Hilda. She self rezzed and then I continued with my turn, and uh, they just moved in and killed everything uh, because I had no guard. So, uh, like I said, the the later matches got worse and worse just simply because I was probably very tired because it was 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. at that time, I guess. But still, I do like how the box is turning out. Um, I definitely like the fact that Subami is getting some play now and actually did pretty well. Um, I'm silver three, which is usually par for the core for me. Um, so it's going to be a kind of a bit, bit of a climb. I don't know how hard I'm going to go for gold gold three this this season. Um, I am I have been pretty busy. Um, I don't care about the skin. Uh, obviously, it's for um, uh, is it silver wolf? Is that is that his name? I don't remember. Um, the uh, the skin for the soldiers for the faceless, which is nice. Um, and that's about it. So there's not really much else to point out. I mean, the main reason I would want to go to Gold 3 as soon as possible is to get the better rewards. Um, obviously, I want to get as many enchants as possible. Uh, really, the thing I'm hurting on right now, build-wise, is I'm, I don't have is uh, Arena enchants. Because, unfortunately, there's not very many ways to get Arena enchants besides Apex. Um, you can buy some from the shop, but they're just the right the, these ones, which don't have a high chance of giving you the SSR versions. Um, so that's something I'm struggling. I think Sherry's still missing uh, Arena and Chance, which is a bit unfortunate. And uh, Lucretia is also also a little bit behind on her buffs. I think she has everything, uh, at least a buff on every slot, but they're not maxed out yet. Uh, Enchant-wise, I always want more enchants, but I'm also not really hurting for enchants <laughs> at the same time. So like I said, I'm not, I might be taking it easy this week or this uh, this season. We'll see how it goes. Um, I may try a match tomorrow, and I'll probably, and if I do, I'll record it, of course. Because um, at least tomorrow I would have, um, well, I say tomorrow, you guys are going to see this on Monday, but uh, essentially on Sunday, my uh, Kyura will be six stars, which will be a little bit additional health. Uh, I did use Kyura in one of the matches I lost, and she was actually really helpful uh, against the AoE because she kind of does a pseudo juggler and heals a bunch of people passively. Uh, besides that, there's not really much else to talk about. Um, I kind of ignored Forbidden Battleground this time. I did. I kind of just did the bare minimums, and I didn't even touch the Creation Workshop. I just don't. I just didn't care. <laughs> I honestly just did not care for it. Um, and then they, of course, been there's been the whole. Um, Dimensional Expedition. Uh, it's better. It's still grindy, but it's not 
it's not so it's not so, it's not it, it feels like you're actually accomplishing things unlike last time uh, last time like you know i devoted everything and i barely made like a dent in the city uh, this time we've been kind of just wiping through it um the only mistake i th i think as uh, since i'm the one that kind of controls this um is i probably should have beelined for the um baldia city, city sooner um i actually took some time to go after some of the the outer cities first um before moving in and i think that cost us some time which unfortunately is going to affect our rankings so yeah yeah we're not even, we're not going to catch up unfortunately so we're just outside the bracket for four to eight which kind of sucks but we're also going to get a bunch of enchants from this as well, so that's why I'm not super concerned about um, the rewards for Apex this season. Um, I've actually been really good on the enchants lately. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention on one on the matches with Lucretia is I did pull, I did pull on the new equipment banner. I have one of each item, so I have a core of guile, ultimate earmuffs. I have night bloom, but I'm still working on enchanting it. Uh, Night Bloom's really good. It's an intelligence staff that that works for that works well with supports. Um, allows you to allows it so whenever you cast any, anything on an ally, it uh, removes an additional debuff, which is really good, especially for a number of characters that are lacking uh, cleansing potential. Um, and as you can see here, my Lucretia actually has a Nebulous Robe, um, which is reduces reflect reflect damage. So I intend on using Lucretia a lot for single target. And so I'm hoping this will make it so I don't blow myself up, because um, I don't. I am going with a um, what do you call it? A uh, gift of eternal life. So it's not like the other characters where I have a ranged weapon that does reduce damage or uh, whatever that nonsense is. But uh, yeah, like I said, uh, new season. Um, we'll see how it goes. So until next time, I am the Depressed Dior. This was Language from Mobile Apex Season Eight. See you guys later.